Another set of spoilers from the upcoming Legends of Runeterra expansion have been revealed, this time focusing on the Piltover and Zaun region. We've got another brand new champion being added to the game along with some more cards spoiled and I would say a few of them not only support the new champion, but have the potential to support other decks from the current set we have, and even set 2 as well. In this video, we'll be covering the 5th champion revealed from the next set, Vi, as well as the other new cards that were revealed. Just like in previous videos, we'll be talking about what Vi does, along with the other spoilers shown, and I'll also be giving some initial thoughts on the types of decks Vi and the other cards will likely fit best in. Let's jump right into it. We'll start off with Vi. Vi is a 5 mana champion from the Piltover and Zon region. She has 2 power and 5 health at level 1. She has challenger and tough, and while she's in play or in hand, you grant her plus 1 power every time you play another card up to a maximum of 8 power. In order for Vi to level up, she must strike for 10 damage or more. When Vi does level up, she has 10 power and 6 health, keeps challenger and tough, and when she strikes a unit while attacking, she deals 5 damage to the enemy nexus. I think the big draw of Vi is her level 2, and I'm pretty sure a lot of players are thinking the same thing. Her level 2 has the potential to end games very, very quickly. That said, I think getting her to level 2 might be a bit of a challenge. Her level 1 is pretty awkward, I would say. She's the type of card that heavily incentivizes you to keep her at the start of the game if she's in your opening hand, and this theme of heavily incentivizing players is going to continue when we talk about a few of the other cards that were spoiled. It just seems like if you don't keep her in your opening hand or draw her early enough, and then you end up top decking her later, She's going to be pretty underwhelming since she only starts as a 2-5 for a 5 mana unit. It's like she's a slightly upgraded Braum, but the problem is that 2 power isn't doing much by the mid game, and you'd need to play a few cards for her to have a bigger impact on the game in that scenario. Granted 5 health combined with tough means she's tough to remove. Radiant Guardian is a nightmare to deal with when activated as an example. But my other concern is Vi dies to Culling Strike at level 1 unless you can buff her twice. I'm skeptical of Vi, but I do want to see if there's a deck she can work in. Noxus with Draven is one possibility due to him generating spinning axes, and that complements Piltover and Zon's ability to naturally generate extra cards. You would probably play most, if not all, of the other cards spoiled with Vi, but we'll get to those in a bit. The other possibility would be Demacia, and I say that because it's clear that Vi is meant to be played in mid-range decks. She doesn't fit in aggro at all, due to her base stats at level 1, and I would argue she doesn't fit in control decks either. Demacia is great at unit combat with some of the best units you can play in the game on curve, and they're the best at buffing units as well, all traits that mid-range decks value. Combine that with a unit like Vi that has 5 health and tough and you've got a deck she could end up being a powerhouse in. She's even a great target to use for Detain since only hard removal effectively kills her. Demacia would focus more on taking advantage of Vi's stat line along with Tough and Challenger than her ability to buff herself. As far as synergies, aside from the other Piltover and Zon spoilers, used Cask Salesman should work as far as cards played for Vi since the Salesman plays Caustic Cask, which is an actual card in the game. It's possible other token generating cards work as well, like Haunted Relic, but I haven't seen confirmation of that yet, so we'll have to test it out and see. Alright, let's talk about the other cards that were revealed with Vi, starting with Veteran Investigator. This is a 2 mana follower with 3 power and 2 health, and when he's summoned, all players draw one card. So Runeterra is now getting its first card that has a symmetrical draw effect. This does have some potential to be used with Vi, especially if she's already in your hand, but this goes back to wanting to keep Vi in your opening hand at the beginning of the game if you have her. I think this card has more potential in other decks though. The first of those decks being Mushroom decks. Mushroom decks tend to struggle since they've had no way of forcing their opponents to draw cards up until this point, and this could help with getting that Mushroom damage. Their only solution to not being able to force opponents to draw so far has been to simply plant more Mushrooms. Granted, I'm a little skeptical because I don't think just one card that makes your opponent draw is going to be enough. I think we need another card from the set that has a similar effect if Mushroom decks are really going to be taken seriously. Because as of now, the only way to get multiple draw effects like Veteran Investigator is to have him killed, then revive him. 
Speaking of which, let's talk about the other deck that Veteran Investigator has potential in and the very first deck that I thought of when I first saw this card. That being Maokai decks. Now, Maokai is another champion from set 2 that was spoiled about a week ago that is focused around decking your opponent. I think this combined with Maokai and the other toss cards have a lot of potential together. Especially if you pair this with cards that revive your units. The best one being Chronicler of Ruin since she actively kills one of your other summon ability units and then when she revives them, they use their ability again. So you can get multiple veteran investigator abilities off, multiple dead bloom wanderer abilities off, and even thorny toad is a good target since chronicler will activate its last breath ability and then revive thorny toad so you can use the last breath ability again later on. Like I said in my Maokai review video, I've been playing card games a long time and I've always been a fan of decks built around decking your opponent. Those that have watched my eternal card game content can definitely attest to that. Insightful Investigator is up next. This is a four mana follower with three power and three health. And when you play a two cost card while she's in play, you draw one fleeting. There was a bit of a glitch during the Vi reveal video when this card was shown off. A mystic shot was played and then a veteran investigator was drawn, but the investigator didn't show as a fleeting card which is a card that disappears at the end of the round if you don't use it. So based off of the video, the way this card works is that when you play a two cost card, you draw a random two cost card from your deck and it gains fleeting. I assumed before the video that this made a fleeting copy of the same card you played. But in hindsight, I think this card would have been worded differently if it did that. Anyway, once again, this has synergy with Vi in that she gets buffed even when you play the fleeting card that you draw from this. As far as other decks, I think this is probably going to fit best in something spell heavy, probably something like Karma Ezreal, though I don't know if that deck even has any flex slots to put this card in. Uh, I could maybe see this in Luxheimer Dinger decks, but the problem there is that this card is likely best going into round five with all your spell mana. So you can play this card, play your two cost card, then play your other two cost card for eight mana. That's the same turn that you want to play Heimerdinger with Flash of Brilliance or even Progress Day if you can take the hit on tempo. So this one is a bit of a weird fit as far as existing decks go. It can build up Assembly Bot pretty quickly if your deck is heavy on two mana spells, so that might be an idea. Next, let's talk about Patrol Wardens. This is a three mana follower with four power and three health, and when you draw it, it costs one less this round. So this is a solid three drop. I do get some Vanguard Squire vibes from this one, but Patrol Wardens is overstated for its cost, unlike the Squire, where you need to get it down to three mana to feel okay about playing it. You don't need to do that with Patrol Wardens. This is yet another card that has synergy with Vi in the sense that the lower mana cost when drawn might allow you enough mana to play an additional card to buff Vi twice in the same turn. Wardens doesn't do much else though. What you see is pretty much what you get when it comes to this card. If there's a need for a big statted three drop in a Piltover and Zon deck that doesn't want to pass the first two turns just to play something like Unlicensed Innovation, then that's where you'll see Patrol Wardens. So probably an aggro or mid-range deck is where you'll see this, not Control. We've got a pair of spells next, starting with Vault Breaker. This is a three mana burst spell that gives an ally plus two power for the round and also creates a fleeting Vault Breaker in hand. It's assumed that this card is Vi's champion spell, mainly based on the art, but I couldn't find anything to confirm that. It would make sense though, since a lot of the spells that champions are associated with in this game have some type of synergy with the champion, whether that's helping them level up faster or otherwise. Anyway, this has synergy with Vi, in that she'll be buffed twice if you play this card and the fleeting copy you get in the same turn. Outside of that though, I don't think we'll be seeing this card in any other deck. Maybe I could see this paired with Lux as a quick way to spend six mana in one turn to level her up, especially since this can't be countered by Deny. But the type of effect that Vault Breaker provides usually doesn't work well with Lux's game plan. You're usually not looking to buff units in a Lux deck. One thing I am hoping for when it comes to this card is that if it is Vice Champion spell, I'm hoping the fleeting copy of the card also shuffles a copy of Vi into your deck, allowing you to get extra copies of Vi, similar to Karma when you play her inside of Aegis spell after she levels up. In any case, I think there are just better options than this card if you want to run pump spells in any Piltover and Zon deck. Granted, those better options come from other regions. 
This just feels like a bad brother's bond if we're looking at this card on its own. Finally, we have Gotcha. This is a four mana fast spell that deals three damage to a unit. But when you draw Gotcha, it costs two less mana for that round only. In general, the biggest problem with cards like Gotcha are that they force a certain play pattern. In this case, you're heavily incentivized to play this card as soon as you draw it when you may not want to. You might have already planned out how you were going to spend your mana this turn, and if you draw Gotcha and you want to use it, that could throw your entire turn off. Now, if you decide that your original plan is still the most optimal, then you still go with the cards you initially planned to play, but then your Gotcha costs four mana, which honestly feels a little expensive. I was hoping this would also cost three, so Piltover and Zondex that don't have a discard package would have an easy slot in replacement for Get Excited, but four mana makes me a bit skeptical of replacing Get Excited with this card. At three mana though, this card might be a little too good. And maybe four mana isn't so bad because of the priority passing system that Runeterra has. Maybe this is still the go-to option for control decks over Get Excited because they have much less discard fodder than something like discard aggro and they float more mana than other decks anyway due to them passing priority more often. That's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to like the video below or even share it with others. Both help to get the video out there to others in the community here on YouTube. I'll be looking to cover more of the new cards as they're spoiled over the next two weeks. So if you don't want to miss those videos or any other videos I put out, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell icon. And feel free to follow me at the other social media places I hang out at. You can catch me streaming Runeterra live on Twitch as well as hanging out on Twitter and even my own Discord. Links to all those are in the video description. Thanks for taking time out of your day to watch this and I'll see you next time. Take care.